This is about what happens when you don't pick up your musical instrument for a good three weeks. It really, really <laughs> does not bode well for um, your practice and your technique and keeping up on stuff. Uh, but hopefully we can talk a little bit about that today. If you haven't met me before, my name's Edwin Culver. I'm a classical guitarist and composer. Uh, who writes music to express the burdens of others so they no longer have to bear those burdens alone. Um, and you'll have to forgive me if my, my camera keeps drooping here. I might try something here to keep that because I'm going to need that later. But what's going on is I figured I would start launching a new series today. Um, something that I was inspired by uh, a person I just met recently. And what they're doing... Hopefully that's a little better. Um, what they're doing is talking about something they've learned each day. I don't know that I can commit to sharing something with you every single day <laughs> that I've learned, um, but I am going to start doing that regularly uh, because I think it's, it's awesome and I'm uh, constantly filling myself with stuff. Uh, so I will spoil the beans right now. Number three is going to be something on the guitar. Uh, so you'll have to stick around towards till the end of this uh, Facebook Live or this video. Uh, to see me perform that music live. But the first thing that I learned today, um, the th first thing that I learned today is <laughs> that mm, I have more potential than I thought. And this comes from a quote that I heard the other day uh, by Kevin David. Um, I actually heard him speak live this last weekend. And he ended his talk uh, by saying, you can often tell how uncomfortable or how successful someone is based on the number of uncomfortable situations they put themselves in. So you can often tell how successful a person is based on the number of uncomfortable situations they put themselves in. Uh, let me know if you if that resonates with you. Uh, let me know if you know you would agree with that. Um, maybe even let me know uh, an uncomfortable situation you've willingly put yourself in lately, just to you know test yourself and grow you know further out of your comfort circle. For me, uh, that happened today, <laughs> and I was doing an ab workout, uh, doing following a, a certain uh, trainer online that I follow all the time, and uh, it's you know high intensity interval training, really great stuff. Um, really, really, really uh, spends your energy. And I'll be honest, this particular workout, I've never been able to do more than like one set of it uh, all the way through. And it's just all these crazy, um, essentially sit-up variations uh, and, and a lot of like real fast cardio. And it's just one after the other. There's, you know, no breaks in between. And, <laughs> you know, I could always do it once and then I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm done. I'm wiped out. Uh, and, and, you know, the trainer's like, all right, you know, restart this video immediately and go back and do it again. <laughs> and it's like, what, dude? No, I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. Uh, but this morning I changed my mindset completely about it. Going back to that Kevin David quote, uh, you can often tell how successful someone is based on the number of uncomfortable situations they put themselves in. And so, you know, every time as I was starting to max out during these sets, these workout routines, I'd start to think, ooh. This is an uncomfortable situation. This is another uncomfortable situation you can put yourself in. And that brings you, you know, one step closer to success, um, in this case, in, in my fitness. And believe it or not, I didn't do this, you know, get through two sets of this crazy workout today. I actually got through four. Now, the fourth one, I was like limping through it, but I made it through four. So so I didn't just double my, my you know, uh, um, potential uh, to, to, to do these extreme workouts, um, but I quadrupled it simply by embracing the discomfort, um, simply by seeing the discomfort as an opportunity uh, where the growth is going to actually occur, um, and, and seeing the discomfort as something that's uh, part of success. So that's the first thing I learned today, and it's, uh, you know, obviously already having really big, you know, multiplication um, benefits uh, uh, in my life. Uh, the second thing, this is more technical. So this is for anybody who, um, especially you, if, if, if you're looking to um, create something on YouTube, that sort of thing. This this second thing that I learned today is specifically about YouTube's uh, algorithm. So if you're an artist, uh, if you're a content promoter, or anything like that, uh, I learned how the algorithm works. Uh, appreciate the, the love down there. Um, the algorithm, this is, this is, this is the, uh, the, uh, the hierarchy, essentially. So it immediately rates your video 
and pushes it to other people based on the watch time. So when you're creating a YouTube video, your number one goal should be watch time retention, getting people to keep watching the video all the way through. It's not, you know, number one priority is not the headline. Number one priority is not the cover image, um, you know, things like that. The number one priority is watch time retention. And what happens is if you get a high enough watch time retention, YouTube first then sends that video to the people who have subscribed to you and asked for no notifications, those people who hit the bell. Um, and if, if this video is going well, appreciate the love down there. Um, if this video is going well, it will go to those people first. Those are kind of your tribe, the people who've subscribed to you and said, hey, please notify me next time you release a video. Now, if it's going well, and if those people, when they receive the video, if they watch it, and they, you know, there's a there's a long uh, watch time retention rate, then YouTube's algorithm is going to say, okay, this must be a good video. Let's push it now to the people who subscribed to your channel but didn't ask for notifications. So it's going to pop up over on their sidebar, um, and so and so YouTube starts pushing it to that second layer of people, people who've subscribed but they didn't actually hit the bell and said, hey, you know, directly notify me. Um, so now it's going to start popping up there. And if those people, if that second uh, layer of people, if they start clicking your video and they start watching your video, uh, and you, again, you get a nice long uh, video retention rate, then YouTube is going to read that and, and say, okay, great, this must be a really awesome video. Let's push the video on to the third level of people. And those are people just outside of your network. Those are people who haven't subscribed, who haven't asked for notifications. Um, those are just, you know, people... You know, for me, when I'm doing music videos, you know, those will be people just looking for videos of classical guitar, that sort of thing. Now YouTube will say, okay, this video has proven that it's got a long retention rate for people who are subscribed to Edwin Culver and wanted notifications. And it's also proven for people who have subscribed but didn't ask for notifications. So now we're going to give it to people who don't even really know about Edwin Culver yet. And, and again, if it's got a long retention rate through with those people, boom, even even more, you know, YouTube's just going to uh, push it even further. So that's kind of one secret that I learned today about the YouTube algorithm uh, and what's going on there. I learned something really interesting about what an algorithm is the other day, too. Maybe I'll share that on my next video. Uh, let me know if, you know, that's something that you would like me uh, to, to share about, you know, what really is an algorithm. Uh, it's really, it's, um, it's as simple as two words. I can I can dispel the you know the mystery the mystery of an algorithm whether it's Facebook's al algorithm or YouTube's algorithm I can dispel that mystery for you in two words uh, so if that you know would help you as you're creating stuff online just let me know um, you know and I will share that with you guys uh, possibly on the next uh, video that I make all right number three I told you this is the third thing I learned today. Uh, and this is what happens when you don't practice your guitar for three weeks. You're desperate to play it. Uh, it feels so nice to play it, but also you realize, man, your technique is just lacking. Um, you should have kept practicing everything like that. But this is a little piece that um, a classical guitarist, um, one of my favorite classical guitarists, actually emailed us uh, on his mailing list just the other day, um, yesterday actually. So I really had a first chance tonight to sit down and kind of run through it. It's a evocation or an evocation. Uh, it's from a set. There's two books of these evocations written by Eugene Den Hode. I actually haven't heard of Eugene Den Hode before. He's a, a contemporary composer. He's alive right now. It's a really nice, just delicate kind of bittersweet um, piece. Uh, evocations, you know, evo evo uh, evocations, evocations, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, you know, usually kind of have that bittersweet feel to them. Um, so this is a piece uh, composed by him. It's number 16 uh, from the two books. And forgive me because, like I said, I haven't practiced at all for three weeks. Um, what's up, Adam? Good to see you, man. Glad you're tuning in. I am totally going to text you, buddy, uh, so we can get lunch like I said we would. Uh, I've been away in the Philippines and uh, and uh, traveling in a little bit of Asia and then off to Texas for a marketing conference and everything like that. Uh, so I'm finally back in the U.S. and finally guitar back in hand. Adam's been you know, an awesome supporter. Uh, he's been there with me you know, ever since uh, I've started launching this thing in Sarasota, Florida area. And uh, it's uh, really, really, really good to have someone who really listens uh, when, you're, when you're creating this stuff. So 
Appreciate it, Adam. You're awesome. All right, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Um, also, I didn't mention that I've only had 30 minutes to sit down and run through. I've actually determined a method for learning a brand new piece of music extremely quickly. If that's something that would interest you, uh, soon I think I'm going to actually type it up and create a guide uh, that can walk you through. And you don't have to be a classical guitarist, you can be any sort of musician. Honestly, you could, could apply this method to learning anything, uh, but it's so far been pretty effective with classical guitar. So this is the variation number 16 by Eugene Den Hood. Well, after three weeks of not playing, that really feels nice on the fingers. Uh, I'm wondering what a good analogy for it is. You know, it's kind of like that flow when you 
when you go ice skating or, you know, you ever just notice when you like put your hands in the water and it just really feels nice, like the water flowing through your fingers and it's just kind of relaxing and soothing. And, um, it's really nice to, to, you know, pick up the instrument again and share with you guys a couple of things that I've learned. Uh, let me know one thing that you've learned today. I would love to learn more uh, from you. Let me know if you learned anything in this, but definitely uh, leave me a message um, letting me know something that you have learned today. And that'll probably help me find inspiration for my next video. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching. This is Edwin Culver, classical guitarist. And I hope that this music speaks to you. Peace.